Somebody better slap a number on this. Let's go. And this will be correct this time. <laughs> Episode number 234. Good, good, good. Back in the room. Welcome, everybody. We are Blackguards. This is our weekly podcast, and we have the whole gang here with you today. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye. That's all I got. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Yeah, so we're leaving for tour next week, right? That's right. Big week coming up. We got a, we got brand new SJC drums in the in the van. What does that mean, Turbo? We have the uh, we have the first tour kit. So we uh, endorsed a deal with SJC and uh, let's rock. So we got the first all black uh, tour kit coming. So they did um, all black hardware, and uh, it's kind of the ode to the first album. And um, off we go. Let's make it rad. So wow, Matt at uh, SJC, thank you. And I uh, worked with Chris. This last week, and uh, we're working on all the artwork on the second kit. And so I want to say, anybody out there, if you have any awesome picks and you want to get something uh, possibly thrown on, we're doing a full collage on the upcoming snare drum. And uh, so if you've got something you want to see gets on there, send it to me. Send it to us, and we'll can take a you, look. We'll consider it. Can you, uh, can you explain a little bit more what you mean by that, what you mean by the SJC and the Blackguard story and – on and on. Can you explain a little bit on that? Yeah. So what we're doing is we're building a kit together, um, SJC drums and blackguards and me, and we're putting, we're building what we call story of blackguards. And so the bass drum is going to be, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but the drums are going to be dedicated to the albums that have been released and the history of the band itself. And so the snare drum is going to be the main focal point. It's going to be a collage of you know, like you guys know some of the things I've shared with some of the random photos and uh, little inside jokes and things we do live on stage and, um, you know, all kinds of fun things. It's And so right now that kit's going to be, it's in process. I just started working with the graphics designers this week. And so we went over all the logos and everything and uh, all the images. And we, right now I'm submitting them like the final batch of images. And so they're like, you got anything else, we'll put it together. So. It's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. So the story of the band during its entire history is gonna be throughout the drum kit, and then that's as we build more with the band, the drum kit will grow. So I think that's a great idea. Awesome. I think it's yeah. yeah, that's it. That's that's really. Uh, and Heidi, uh, what what fiddle are you taking with you on this tour? The Glasser New York with the uh, Eric Asado custom pickup. Yeah, so that that was a collaboration last summer. Um, they gave me an artist deal, and Andrew Glasser actually shipped the violin, just just it, to Eric Asado for the custom bridge setup with the pickup in it. Not the way that the violin normally is sold retail, but the way that I wanted it to to have a good, solid pickup on it. <laughs> so yeah, that was last last summer. Yep, and that's one I toured with. Yeah, and that Glasser fiddle has been a showstopper. It's uh, obviously you got to know how to play the motherfucker, but you, uh, but it it is not only a showstopper in quality of sound, but it's it's it, it, the look that I mean, you picked. I think you picked the best finish. Um, I mean, can can you just t tell us a little bit versus versus the other, you know, outdoor rock and roll violins you've used in the past? What's what's been What's been so phenomenal? Why is Glasser number one in your in your estimation? A, a lot of acoustic electric or just electric, they they just don't carry that same full tone, and they don't have the same action. Like um, I I I don't know. I I don't want to say that people don't play in tune or people don't play well because I I honestly think a lot of times it's the instrument like. To have something that is so playable and that reacts so well and has such a big sound is is it's a game changer. It's incredible. So that one, yeah. in my opinion, has the the most authentic sound for what a violin, you know, it, it doesn't sound like it's electronic. It has a big full sound. So and it handles every climate, every situation. I mean, it, it's got the mechanical peg, so it's much easier to keep it in tune. I mean, nothing's perfect because you're still dealing with tension and, you know, everything around it. And the bridge is actually an acoustic bridge. So, but it, man, that thing holds up. If you get the right gauge of string, it makes a world of difference too. So, and they partner with Larson 
uh, strings. And I've had great success with the Larsons. So anyway, it, it just, it is, I've had a, a, a bunch of them and this is the only one I've ever really liked. I had a few others that I even sent back, like after playing them for months and not being happy with the pickup sound or the, this, that, or the other thing, the feel, they, it, <laughs> can't tell you yeah. the number of things I sent returned and you don't return violins, but I did. <laughs> About three times no, over, maybe four. It's your livelihood, and it's and it and it, it means so much. We were just talking before the cameras went on. How, you know, you you are the feature, and when your when your instrument's not doing what you're what you give. I was showing you the action on the, on the acoustic guitar because that one's set up mo more like an electric guitar. But the action kids is basically the playability of of the neck. You know, the 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 the, the neck, the strings on the neck, and. Sometimes you see the Sears guitar and the strings will be like, you know, I'm half a mile off the neck and, and you have to, you have to be, be an Olympic, you know, finger wrestler to, to just get the string to, to, to the fretboard. But you're, and, 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 and I'm not just saying this because you'll beat me up, but the, your, uh, your tone and the, just the, the, the timber of that, that, uh, that violin, when you took it out, you played it first for us on a, a earlier episode of the Slapper Cast. Um, you put a, but, but just that in the, in the room on its own sounded a million dollars, you know, just, you just, and then, and then we got to hear it live. And the same thing, watching the sound guys and the, the, the people in the room just go, God, you know, that's telling you that you, that you really have a, you know, you have a, so Glasser violins. Top top row and and SJC drums. Now we just got to get myself and Chad. We got to get a kazoo deal. We got to uh, you know get these stupid guitar. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, yeah, so it's uh we need to. We you'll you'll notice now going forward uh, on on all our tour posters and whatnot. You'll you'll notice the uh, you'll notice those little uh, those little uh, endorsement stickers or emblems or logos or and on and so on and so forth so moving right along uh how's everything over in smally world pretty good pretty yeah good. yeah it's looking after my mom's cats once again as she is she is off gallivanting in scotland something she's been planning one of her annual uh trips with her friend phyllis they're having a great time over there they were in glasgow i think with the, she was uh she told they told me they're going to be doing a boat tour of uh, loch Lomond. Oh. So. Yeah, well, she, that's cool. And I, I had to correct her on the. I'm going to embarrass her. I had to correct her on the pronunciation of Glasgow because she was saying Glasgow, and she told me that on the way over there, like even some of the uh, like flight attendants were were saying it wrong, and then she got. I guess because she didn't believe me, she got a, ca a cab driver in Glasgow to confirm it for her. <laughs> yes, it's Glasgow. So, I'm surprised and, she didn't tell you Glasgow to hell. It's yeah. it's a uh, <laughs> it's it's a very violent town if you. If you go in, you know, on a crib. there's a, and, and, and there's a joke, there's a joke that, uh, that I love very much. And, um, mostly expats or people that have been there will, will know, they'll probably know, know the joke, or at least they'll get it. Um, the Irish will definitely get it, but, um, the joke goes as follows. Uh, what do Las Vegas and Glasgow have in common? The only two places Lots. on the planet where you can pay for a prostitute with chips. Ah. Chips. Okay, there you go. There you go. There you got it. Okay, good. Anyway, I love that joke. So uh, you're welcome. So good. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so moving right along. Does anybody have songs to kill today on Slappercast episode 224? Yes. Okay, I got I'll, one to shine a light. All right. Well, I got one to kill and shine a light, so I'm going first. Okay. I'll give you a, I'll give you a second, right? So so the kill is okay. there's a there's a song called Youth Gone Wild and it wasn't even going to be my song today. But I, I saw a poster of uh some guy, some singer uh, used to sing with a band called Skid Row back in the 80s and most likely 90s, but um he had canceled the show and people were ripping him so I I, I was just that that song just gets on my fucking nerves. It's called Youth Gone Wild. The band's called Skid Row and it's awful. And it just it's just, it, and it was so overplayed. I mean, so overplayed. Uh, it made you miss Hotel California. No, it didn't. I'm just kidding. 
I'm kidding. I, I threw up a little bit when I said that. So uh, Youth Gone Wild and then Shine a Light on a, 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 uh, and Kelly's going to get mad because I think I may have shone a light on this before, but I'll do two in case. But I wanted to shine a light on uh, Ride Like the Wind by Christopher Cross. And the more I think about it, the more I think I may have shone a light on that before, only for the guitar solo at the end. Guitar solo at the end is fucking insane. So good. And uh, Christopher Cross needs to be recognized for that guitar solo. Unbelievable. But I'll put another one in there too. Not near as good a song, but a great song. All the, not, it just the melody of the song is so catchy, and it's d- done so well. And people, that, if you don't like his voice, then you probably won't like it. It's like it's like a Neil Young. You know, you have to be a Neil Young fan to enjoy that voice. I prefer to be punched in the eye um, than listen to Neil Young. But the song, the other song, is called "Poor Shirley." It's just a beautiful melody. And it's uh, sung really, really well. And it's and, and it was off that record that was a complete surprise to me. And he's also he's also out of Texas as well. So it's kind of a it's kind of so that, 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 that's my kill and my shine. Who's who's next? I was gonna say oh. I'd, I'd rather be punching the eye. Kind of sounds like it could be a Neil Young song. <laughs> I could hear picture him sing, singing that. Punch I'd in the eye. Punch in the eye. Yeah. 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 Okay. Come so on. I on Sunday I. I did this gig where they hired a bunch of us to just read the scores for um, a show, like a tribute show. And it's all Elton John and uh, Billy Joel music. And I probably had said this before, but I can't <laughs> Elton John. And I love Billy Joel. So I was really interested in taking this job because I wanted to go like, yeah, I mean, they just had us there for a reading so they could prepare for their gig in Prague. So they just use us here to to try out the parts, and I'm like, yeah, I'm down. I want to come play anyway. So like the, I, I have to kill an Elton John song because I just can't. Stand. <laughs> I guess there's a couple I like, can. I'm like, okay, that's a decent song, but overall, it's I just always hit forward, you know, or skip everything. <laughs> but I don't like Benny and the Jets. <laughs> Get that song. It's such yeah. a dud. It's just. A dud. Okay, and then Billy Joel, I think, Kelly Navarro will say, I think I've already said how much I love Piano Man. But it's still my all-time favorite. I know, Chad, I think that was your reaction. So I have a a second because I think I already said that. But um, Moving Out, I really, I love that song. It has interesting instrumental pieces in it and the tempo changes. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a cool song. I, I love that whole era of Billy. All those yeah. Scenes. scenes from an Italian restaurant. Yes. You know that one? Yes. Fucking amazing. And then Allentown. If you want, if you want to yeah. go back in time and you want just to smell what fucking Allentown smells, put that fucking song on. Close your eyes and you'll be there. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That that groove and that yeah. I'm, I'm I hate to say it. I'm embarrassed. It's but it's such a great that whole that whole record. Uh. uh Damn, it was like Nylon Curtain. Such a oh, great yeah, sounding yeah. record from yeah. start to finish. It's so great. Okay. Yeah. Well, Billy yeah. Joel just has that like that presentation of every song. I mean, he every song he does, the way he presents it, then delivers it. That's what I mean to say. His delivery is so great. Mm-hmm. So much character in the way he does things. Anyway. So would you would, would, yeah. uh, if if you had to take Billy Joel from from America and drop him in Europe, do, do you have somebody? Do, do you think is there somebody that comes to mind that reminds you of Billy Joel in Europe? I, I'm asking because because uh, there is with with with, with me uh, just just uh, just songwriting and 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 uh, not, not not even style, but his the the, the songwriting ability. Do, does that make sense? I'd like to yeah. pair him up with a composer. I, I kind no. of think of Ron Kavara because of his different styles. It's so many different songs are different themes and different styles. He's got like a Spanishy one, and a, so that that's what comes to mind. But I'm sure there's a better example. I hadn't thought of that. That's a great example. I was thinking of somebody again, like Mark Knopfler, who has just circled the globe musically, done all different kinds of stuff. But but again, uh, Billy Joel is one of these people that you just either hate or I mean, that's not true. I mean, you know, there, there are people that can take them or leave them or like some of them, dislike them. But that early stuff and even the later stuff, the 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 uh, Stormfront record. Yeah. I bought that. I couldn't I couldn't resist it. I mean, the the, uh, the Down Easter Alexa and the um, the one that 
Garth Brooks covered uh, Shameless. Uh, th- mm-hmm. Those two songs were so different, but they were done really, really well. I didn't like Garth Brooks' version of it that much, but um, who was the, the European person you mentioned? I didn't catch that. Ron Cavana. Oh, Cavana, yeah, 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 yeah. Re- that's a great. That's a great correlation. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> Show off, Ooh. big brain. Yeah. <laughs> Who's next? Occasionally. That's what happens when you got the long red hair. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was pulling up. I was pulling up uh, songs on my my phone today where it, you say just Chad Smalley Station. It'll just play stuff that it think it either it knows I like or thinks it'll think I it thinks I, I would like based on what I listen to. And a lot of it was predict- predictable stuff. And this was not surprising. But it pulled up Living Color, uh, their album Vivid, uh, Middleman, which is still one of my favorite songs off that record. And uh, I said, well, if I if I was gonna kill a song off that record, which one would it be? And I immediately thought of Glamour Boys. <laughs> There was again not not an overplayed song. I, I don't I can't remember the last time I heard it, but I've never liked it. It's just we sh- it's it's totally it's it's like the uh, the Maxwell Silver Hammer <laughs> off of that record. It just doesn't doesn't even hold a candle to their other songs. Middleman that groove is absolutely insane, and it's some of the best moments of that rhythm section. The Muskellings and Walt Cahoon, the, the two of them together on that song. The fills they do together, they were really good at doing fills together. These really tight, percussive, syncopated fills that were just so satisfying and powerful. And that one, that one is just full of it. So Middleman's great. That's one song I hear that I just cannot sit still. I, I, I have to get up, and move around. Good stuff. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, Glamour Boys. I'm with you on that one. That was a that was a dud. That was a that was a that was a, uh, a shot and a miss. So yeah. I was I was surprised that they 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 did push that on MTV a lot at the time as like yeah. the second I think it was even the second single they put out I was like what are you guys doing No it was a it was no. bubblegum it was I mean it was, yeah. it was it was just tripe compared to what they can do anyway what you got oh, Turbo yeah. uh, so I'm gonna uh, I just I've been listening to this band nonstop especially this song so we're gonna do Space Hog and we're gonna do off of the Hogacy album we're gonna go This Is America. I already texted you. I'm like, I'm addicted to this song. I'm like, let's play this at next rehearsal. Like, why is this band not in my life? That's a true thing. I'm like, how is this band not in my life? Like, <laughs> I've already bought a couple shirts online from like third party people. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be a fan. So Uber fan. So I just think it's fucking great, man. I've, I think yes. I've listened to it a hundred times on repeat. I'm like, man, that song is the best. Like, and then I was looking up things about the band and they like broke up right after that record. Yeah. yeah, they have a weird history, that band. I'm like, two, what happened here? I'm like, we need to have a chat. Come they, on. Like, they, they had two albums, I guess, and then they got together as a different name for a while with an album that just totally was a dud, apparently it didn't go anywhere. Um, yeah. I've heard, I remember hearing rumors that they were getting back together. I oh, really? It, I don't know if anything ever came of that, but yeah. I don't know I what the story to... is with that story. It's two brothers. Uh, yeah. The two main guys and then a third guy. I can't remember what his name is. Royston and Anthony, uh, Anthony I want to like Langdon. kill the band just because they're not playing. Like, what are you doing? You should be playing. Mm-hmm. Like, man, yeah. so good. I'm so just, well, just, I'm pumped. Just, I'm like, on, on, just, thank you for just quick, that, man. Yeah, yeah. Just a, a quick note on that too. I'd heard a. Sorry, go ahead, Heidi. No, no, no. I was kidding. You're oh, supposed sorry. to raise your hand. And talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my hands, my hands are busy because I, I, I just I forgot my pants. So sorry. Um. Uh, my so I'd heard a rumor that the uh, the band was impossible to work with. I'd I heard that just as a technical, uh, you know, a- any anybody with any technical uh, uh, responsibilities on that tour or on in in their in their entourage was just overwhelmed because they're they they were so specific on what they wanted sound wise and 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 I just heard that they were just impossible to work with and they they were really adamant about. I mean, because mm-hmm. the quality on the records is, and truth be told, we've actually sent some of the Space Hog uh, songs. I've sent them to people that have been recording us before to say, hey, this is kind of the, the style, not the style of the music, but the style of the quality of the of the recordings that we would like, because just the drums are, are thunderous. The guitars are defined, but they're heavy and they're nicely separated. The vocals are pristine. It's you know obviously you got to be able to play your ass off to be to to to, to attain that but that, I'd sent that as a picture a snapshot of 
what you know what audibly i'd like to get from so anyway sorry turbo i'm getting in the way of your kill no no way i love it so it's uh i want to do a little change on the kill that today because one of my favorite bands of all time uh you guys know the descendants uh this recently this week milo from the descendants the singer he uh he had a heart heart attack a mild heart attack so they yeah, they like they canceled part of their European tour. And so instead of uh killing a song today, I'm gonna just be like, get well to the descendants. And Milo, I've been following him online. They've been posting from the hospital and he's in good spirits. And I just man, I just freaking love that band. I've always thought they're one of the pioneers of that style punk rock and and uh so I'm gonna just do a little kudos to him, man. Get well. So Milo, get well and get back on tour. That should be the next album, you know? Very cool, but very uh, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that, that. That's a good shortcut out of getting your homework done. Okay. See what I did there? I absolutely yeah. did. Right. We're just just making just making sure that everybody else sees it too. Okay, just quick lightning round, everybody. And and trouble, you're not allowed to say the Descendants, but just off the top of your head, who, who's the best? And if you repeat again, it doesn't matter. But the question is, name a band off the top of your head right now that we could go on tour with. Starting with you, Heidi. What you got? Um, I know it's tough, isn't it? And you were going to say Descendants, Flat weren't you? 56. We could go with Flatfoot 56. Okay, good one. That was Chad? terrible, but I like them. Go, go, Bordello. Mm. Always, always, always a good one. Always a good one. Turbo, what well, you got? I'm going to do, and this is probably selfishly because I want it to happen, Rise Against. Rise Against, okay. I'm going to say Elton John. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right i was just that's a long way to go to get that fucking punchline all right so we're heading out on tour we've got sjc we've got glass your fiddles we've got uh whatever 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 guitars chad and i decide to bring we are going to um we're going to hibernia uh yeah this coming friday that's right it's this coming friday and then we're going to uh play with our friends the sassanox in uh, heston kansas on saturday Sunday, we're back at the Dubliner in Omaha, Nebraska. And then we're going to say goodbye to Heidi for a couple of days. She's going to go and spend a little time where they uh, make toilet wine. And then we're going to meet up again in a place called Hamilton, Missouri. And she's going to bring some of that aforementioned toilet wine to, uh, to, our, to the Bitterroot Celtic Festival. And not only yes. are we playing, we're, not only are we playing there uh, the, you know, at the, the festival, uh, with our, our our new friends uh, Swagger out of uh, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, but uh, we're also um, uh, Heidi is also doing a uh, fiddle camp up there, uh, which just means everybody just prances around with fiddle, isn't that right? They just that's a fiddle <laughs> camp. I think that's it. Right. You, you, so, are you going to be teaching by ear? Is are you, is that what you're going to be doing? Are you going to be teaching your? Yeah, yeah, What's and it? it's meant to be. Um... Um, it's meant to be a tune learning class, so it, it can be any instrument that you know that that can handle the keys of C, G, D, A, E. So, um, yeah, it's me- it's meant to be open. Like if somebody has a mandolin, a banjo, a guitar, you know, and they want to jump in, but um, obviously fiddle. But yeah, just teaching tunes, and and it'll be by ear, so nobody has to come prepared with anything. Just come prepared to play and have fun and learn a few things and that's great so yeah. and are we going to get any footage of that yeah we are okay <laughs> excellent excellent so uh and, and and uh well again when you yeah that's right ansel adams on the job right there so are you are you going to be um um are, obviously should we have flyers with your book information on it so i i ha- i just put something on instagram today um, on my story and tagged bitter, but I also sent it to them for their Instagram page so they can post it. Glasser New York actually reposted to their story, my post. So they posted it. And then I, uh, um, I'm in the process of tidying up a promo video that I have put together. So I took clips of all the classes I've done in the last year. Um, and then there's some clips from our shows where we play the same tunes that I teach.
it, it's just got to be tidied up a little bit, and then it, you guys will see it out there hopefully in the next day or two. Me and technology. Fantastic. Takes me in. <laughs> but it's almost there, and then, yeah, hopefully Bitterroot will put it up on their website, or at least if it's on social media, so so that people know that they can join, jump in. It'll be, it'll be fun. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And uh, I'm sure the next couple of Slappercast episodes are going to be from the van, you lucky devils. So we're going to do that. And then uh, while we're in Heston, Kansas, I'm going to see about getting our friends, the Sassanax, the, uh, the Werner brothers, having them on. Um, we, 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 had, we had attempted to, funny story, last Sunday, we had, uh, we had uh, done a three-piece, we played a three-piece show in Old Town Spring. Phenomenal place, Trilogy Brew in Old Town Spring, coffee shop, um, delightful, delightful shop, and just a great listening room, just great sounding room, and uh, we, we, we had a lot of fun in there. Uh, and I say all that because it, we're going to do it again, but we we'd mentioned to them that, uh, during the show that we, we'd asked them, you know, we're going to do a couple of songs here back to back to back and uh, have you pick which ones you would like us to record. Well, they overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly picked uh, Streams of Whiskey by the Pogues, which we're going to now work on. Uh, well, obviously, we play it, but we still got to we still got to put a little blackguard stamp on it. So going to do a little something to have uh to have that, so 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 we'll work on that this tour. But I also want to 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 ask you to come along on our journey with us. We will be p- posting from the road, and like I say, we'll get our friends from the Sassanox on there. Just to there's 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 fifty six of them in the band or fifty eight. So we'll get we'll just get the Werner brothers and their TVs, have them on the show with us, just to to do a little segment. But I, but I also mentioned Trilogy Brew because we had a. Uh, we were going to have we were going to do our podcast there, and we were going to have our friend Bradley Morrow, who owns Black House Cigars, Black House Tavern. He has he 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 does coffee. He does all different kinds. Of, the guy is an entrepreneur of epic proportion. The guy is amazing, and uh, not only just a nice, uh, not only just a good friend of ours, good friend of the band, but he's also a Blackguard fan. Which you know, true story is I went to see him just dropped in unannounced to Black House Cigars and say hello. And uh, he had Blackmatic playing loud as fuck <laughs> all over the place. So you can hear it from the street, and then you walk in, and it's loud. He's just walking around like this. So I said, you know, did you know I was coming? You know, why'd you? What, what's his shit playing for? And uh, he said, it's my only CD. Anyway, so uh, long story, long story, long story, long story, and I can't shorten it because I can't shut the fuck up. Uh, we were going to have him on the show. Well, unfortunately – for us and for him, he had to close a business, one of his businesses down that day. It was, it, again, that's a long, long story. We'll have him on another time. But he was scheduled to come with us. And we had scheduled him to come over to Trilogy Brew and sit with us. And we were going to talk about Black House Cigars and his coffee and, uh, you know, his, you know, how, how we met and blah, blah, blah. Great guy. Just a phenomenal, uh, tr- truly interesting, even if you're, you're not interested in any of that stuff. But he's, he's, uh, wonderful man and anyway so he had to take care of business we we were starving none of us had eaten so we decided we're just going to go grab a bite and we'd come back and we'd do our podcast there we'd have angela the proprietor of the of trilogy room come in well she had forgotten that she had also said said yes to a band that had asked to come in and play that evening so we come back to our little area that we had blocked off it's all taken down and their their band setting up and there's keyboards and two guitars and bass and drums and uh shit everywhere and i was oh and she was i'm so sorry so anyway so that if you saw last week's slapper cast which i hope you did uh you you'll you'll we did a short segment with her but we're going to get yeah. we're, you know we're, we're going to have them back on you know we're going to do all this again but it's just been uh if you live in the houston area you just go north north of town, not even very far. It'll take you 20 minutes to get there from downtown Houston. You can be in an old town spring where there is no corporate Starbucks or fucking Chick-fil-A or any of that bullshit. Everything in there is we ate at Lynn's table, which was home cooked, home cooked, fresh, 
top drawer. Everything was service was magnificent. They, we walked in and they go, are you guys blackguards? They goes, yeah, we, we, we heard you were playing. We, got, we were too busy. We wanted to come down and check it. Nicest people, great food um, there. And then, of course, the Black House uh, Tavern or Black House Cigars across the way. They've got uh, confectionery stores. They've got all kinds. But everything is owned by local business, you know, by, by, by local people, you know. So it's a, just a tremendous place to visit. And yeah. Uh, the, I'm told the, too. I, I, Angela told us when we were when we talked to her that Trilogy Brew is about six years old, and they also have. A, a, I knew this, but somebody mentioned it when I posted it. One of my friends goes, "Oh, oh, Trilogy! I love them because they 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 also have a little shop in one of the HEVs around in the, up in that area. So I forget which, exactly which location it is, but I think that's great <laughs> that HEV is supporting you know this this local business instead of you know Starbucks or whatever. So yeah. it is really good. And, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Turbo. It's uh. It's in the one by my house. It's right by my house. That one. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. I yeah. didn't notice that until, <laughs> after, until after we played. I was like, <laughs> I live near this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I wish. I wish they had a location down here. It'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. So I I got my birthday wrong. I I, I was uh, on the phone with uh, uh my credit card was compromised, and I was on the phone. And she goes, "How old are you?" And I and I said. Uh, she goes, no. I said, like, oh, so I, I, I'm turning really old next week. So uh, we're going to, we're going to, I think we're going to be on the road. Actually, I don't have a calendar. Okay. It's the most, it's the most important date of the year. My December 25th and August 8th. So, oh no, we're not yeah. going to be on the road. No, we're still going to be here. Yeah, not, not quite yet. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. It's so, my brother's birthday. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Preston. August 8th. Oh, congratulations, Preston. We got big news. Yeah, yeah. What he happened? just just officially officially got engaged to his fiance Olivia, Aww. and uh, they did give me the heads up that this was coming. But so they they planned it really well. And I I saw the pictures from from it. They went on a trip together, and, and they Preston picked out this just gorgeous location. And it was just something else to see my little brother, you know, on his on his knee, holding oh. his holding the ring up. So I, and my mind just goes back to when I was changing his diapers, you know, twenty five years ago, whenever it was. It's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. How wow. quickly time passes. Wow. Yeah, I'm really proud of that guy. He's now teaching uh, high school chemistry and physics uh, in Austin. That was my, my that was my old job. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to Preston and uh, um, and another another yeah man just just fantastic. So uh, listen, this is uh, this has been episode uh, two twenty four Slabbercast, our weekly podcast, and we thank you so much for listening. Uh, uh, just check in to blackguards.com or your social media, whatever you want. We're going to have a lot of fun next couple of weeks and we, we'd love you to come along. Um, we'll be, uh, like I say, we'll be, you know, uh, checking in from the road and, uh, really looking forward to, uh, I just hope the gas prices just go up a little further too. It's just, yeah, it's just fuck. <laughs> All right, kids. Patreon, thank you. Everybody for listening, thank you. Our bar in Houston, Mark Fennedy, Kelly Fennedy, thank you for uh thank you for they, they they've been listening. They've been they've been checking this stuff out. Berkeley and all that crew. Thank you very much. Anyway, um Heidi, thanks for flying all the way in from Phoenix to do this. We appreciate it. Turbo. <laughs> I hope you contour out balance tomorrow. Chad, get your uh get your pussies look after. We'll uh we'll 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 we'll, we'll chat with you ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll see you next week y'all <laughs>